we were asked to speak about davening. Avaydis Hatfila. Of the Bukhala Babchem. It's very, very timely because because uh, the Shabbos, the Shabbos of Archem Elo. Elo, we know it says in Svarim, in Mate Ephraim, it's Matan Shokhan Aruch, in the Nice Kalaman Shokhan Aruch, the, the Rashi Tevis of Elo being Anila Devi Vedaydi Li. And in Shira Shirim, there's the Pasuk of Daydi Li Vani Loi. Hashem is my beloved is to me and, and therefore in response to that I am to my beloved. And there's the Pasuk Ani Ladaydi Vidaydi Li because I I love my I, I am connected to my beloved. My beloved in return shows me his love. And Chsidis makes a big deal of both of these Psukim. We know in Chassidus there's the terminology of a surusa de la sata, surusa de la eila, known as main nukvin and main tchulin. That is, is the surusa means the arousement, the waking up. There's, there's waking up, they're starting from the latata, they're starting from below, and then they're starting from above. In, the, in any relationship, in a relationship of, in any teacher student, mashpia mekabel, uh, giver receiver relationship so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, coming together from someone above someone below so any time that there's a connection between them it's a uh, it's a chidush davar and there has to be a, there has to be a reason and a way that this connection started so the biggest and first dogma that we have of of what exists of a mashpia and a makabel, is the is the ebishter, kodesh baruch hu, and bris ha'elam, and with what, with what he creates us, the nivraim, his creatures. It says, it says in the pasuk, elam chesed yibane. When Hashem created the world, it was with chesed. There wasn't anyone to arouse Hashem to make a world. There wasn't anyone else besides Hashem. Who is my bilvad? So that obviously was a srusa de Leila. It was a arousement that started from above. But then, each year and every Rosh Hashanah, what Chassidus tells us is there's a, based on the Gemara, the Gemara says, Imru lefani malchius kadesh dam lechuni aleichem. That each year, a new, there's what's called an Arab Rosh Hashanah, the same way it was the first Rosh Hashanah. The Nesira, that means when Adam Rishon went to sleep. And in that time, the rebuilding and the remodeling and the making of Chava from Adam Rishon. Every Erev Rosh Hashanah is repeated this same idea in the Aliyah Samalchus, the Hashem, in Leil Rosh Hashanah, the world loses its, its previous Chayas, meaning the, the love and the energy that Hashem put in from the previous year, which, which it all started from the beginning. Oilum Chesed Yibana, Hashem's kindness. I want to keep the the year, the sorry, the, keep the world for a year with the highest the of the world. Hashem, so to speak, rethinks. It's like an anniversary for someone has a, opened a business, and he, he ha, has his workers. It comes the year, the, the anniversary of the business. It start that the, that day, the anniversary begins on a very serious mode. He's rethinking everything, and he, he's also rethinking his workers, the people he hired. Is this, was, that a, was it smart to ha have him? Should he continue in that position? Maybe we should switch things around, and everyone is frightened. Maybe they're going to lose their, uh, their, their job. So what you do then is you commit, you prepare a present from before this anniversary day. You, you, you prepare yourself and a present and a, a true genuine commitment from inside with a new a new commitment to this to this uh, to the owner to the person and to the director person in charge and you 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 come with this commitment on that day you catch him at the same time that he's questioning if he should keep you if he should if he wants to continue the the, the same way things have been running till now and you catch him and with your commitment saying we'll do it we'll make it happen and he sees on you a new 
a true commitment, like something new, that gives him the spirit of, of going back into it and trying it again for another year. al there's this concept that every Rosh Hashanah, what happens in the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, says uh, the Chazal say, Kaddish Baruch Hu, Yeshiv HaKisei Din, the big din is this union of gvura, which is, should I continue this chesed, which, which would be the likus, the galun is coming into the world. And then when Kishay Yisrael, Neitun Shefrein, Vetaikin Veshefrein, when we blow Shefer, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ayin made me kisei din, V'yeshu v'kisei rachamin. Rachamin means, the Shefer is, is the cry and the commitment. The Shefer has many meanings. It has the, the commitment in general, the, the the cry of, of us reminding Hashem that we're connected to Him because we're Am Yisrael. And it's also like a new commitment to Torah Mitzvah, like the Shefer of Ahi Kela Shefer of Matan Torah. We're saying we're going to do our job this year. Uh, we're going to do our job this year properly. So Hashem sees such a commitment. He says, This year I'm going to continue. I'll, I'll give the world again a new influence out there, writes in Tanya, in Simon Yudal, in Agaras HaKadosh. Every year gets a new influence. And every year it's a, it's a higher level of influence of life that of Hashem's involvement and excitement in the world more than ever before. And the reason of that is because it's not the pshat that the that the Eibishter, or I'm sorry, we we could explain it. Uh, let's say it this way: that what's the reason? What's the subconscious reason that a person, when it comes to this anniversary of his business, he's uh, he's rethinking? It's because he's he's uh, upset at his business. It's because something went wrong necessarily. No doesn't have to be. It's just because Rav Shonim Yudiu Chachma, as time goes by, you become wiser. And it, it's without a question that each year that goes by, you have a deeper, different understanding of how business, the business should be run and how things should be going. It can't be that it's the same thing as you thought when you were started the business at 25 is what you're thinking at 35 you're more developed you have you're more thorough so there's a kaviyochol kaviyochol the way the ebishter mitzad his taive and which is the whole making of the, this world and 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 which that was the chafetz chesed is because he has this view of having this dira betachta in him the Chazal tell us that the first thing that was here, right when Bereish is born, is Ruach Halakim Rachefes is Ruach Hashem Mashiach. He sees the ultimate is that he'll have this. Hashem has this view. Chazal tells us, Who did he discuss if, how to to create the world? Or in other words, why should I create the world? He you see, well, what do I gain out of a world? He's Nishmesein Shel Tzadikim. Oh, they'll be Tzadikim. Be doing Torah or Mitzvahs. In this world, that will make a world which will be a befitting place for the Eibishter. Chazal say, Nisaba, Kadesh Baruch Hu, Lizlo, Yisbarach, Dira, Bezach a dwelling place in this world of, with godliness. So that was his ultimate plan, ultimate goal. And, uh, and year by year, the more mitzvahs we do, we're getting closer and closer. And the Emes is even before Torah mitzvahs, you can ask how about the Deiris, before Matan Torah. But even that had a purpose. It was more settling the world and the world was being more developed, which is also a step closer to having Hashem. There's every everyone and everything is, is developing in their way in making this world a better place. Is how a Goyla Havdal has their purpose and how a Yid is as the ultimate uh, top topping it off, so to speak. And so each year, he's getting closer to, to this ultimate goal and plan. So when it comes, when it comes to uh, Reish Hashanah, he's, so to speak, thinking again. It, it's, 
it's be because of the, the deeper understanding, which means in our case, the deeper feeling of what Dira B'lachtainim is, because we're a few steps closer, so it's, it's a new commitment, it means much more. So, um, so that's what it means when Hashem Andrei Shoshana goes from the Kisei Din to Kisei Rachamim. It says in Tanya that it gets it's it's Er Chodesh Mochodesh Lahir Adayin Me'elam. It's a new light. It's not just like um, I mean it is based on the Klal of Ma'elam Akedesh Rei Meridin. The Kedusha goes up and doesn't go down, but it has also the understanding of it that it's because the the whole reason Kaviyachol there's this rethinking of the new year is because it's a new commitment, it's a new depth, a new connection that he didn't have before. And we have to show him that we are ready to step up to that new level of commitment, that new level of connection, even on this higher level of what it takes in the Avayt of Torah Mitzvah in the upcoming year in the, from the following Rosh Hashanah. So that's in short uh, an idea what it says about what it says in Chesed about Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, we have before Rosh Hashanah we have Elul, which Elul is. Uh, so this explains Anila Daidi Vadaidi Li. So he said when Hashem created the world, it was Daidi Li Vani Loi. It was Hashem. It definitely came from Hashem. Oilam Chesed Yibane. It's from Hashem's kindness. He started and he had a lot of patience. Leidia Kama Erech Apayim Lefonav. It was definitely coming from him and he, he was letting it go, go. But from Matan Torah and on, it became a, more or less the system that Hashem said it's going to be in a, in a way of based on your behavior, like it says, it's a mitzvah, mitzvah. But it's according, the, 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 there's a vart, and the, the Pasuk says, Hashem Tzilcha, Hashem is your shade. So wherever you go, the shade will go. Wherever, however you are, that's how Hashem is. The Zayar says, That the world up there is just a shadow. When a person down here is happy, then up there Hashem will smile, is, is also happy with him. It's a reflection. We're the one that... Uh, there's a chazal that Chassidus always brings down. Said we say in Vayomer, you should do all the mitzvahs. Vasisam oisam. Says atem ksiv. Vasisam atem. You're the ones that are making the mitzvahs happen. You're the ones that that kaviyachol. That that Hashem should kaviyachol have the the lotzin to continue commanding us to do the mitzvahs. And to keep up with us, this bond of Torah mitzvahs is based on Atem, on us doing Torah mitzvahs with the Chayas, with the Simcha. Because you're coming with that approach, so I'll continue the bond with you each year on, on, on Reish Hashanah. So that's why the month of Elo, which is in preparation for this, for, for Hashem to accept the kingship on Reish Hashanah, is, is Elo of Anil Devedili, is the Aveda of us getting close to Hashem. And that's why it's brought down in the month of Elul, a person you've pashpris me myself, a person should, uh, should better our ways. It's a minog uh, to check. It says to be anything that has a bedek to check it. So it says that means bedikas tefillin and bedikas mezuzahs. So, uh, and then there's the, the other Rashi Tevis of Elul. El, El has a Rashi Tevis of Tzedaka, Tfila, Tshuva. All the things need, we need to better ourselves in preparation for Rosh Hashanah. Now, how, how does this all have to do with davening? Where does davening come in? Because in Torah Mitzvah itself, which were, as we said before, the whole Elul is... Uh, is a time to strengthen ourselves in, in Torah mitzvahs. 
like it says, Al Shay Shadwaram Hoyla Maime. Taira Vaidog Mils Hasanim. Taira mitzvah also has different directions. There's different colours in Taira mitzvah. Look at the Yiddish folk. There's Kenai Nahara, there's twelve Shvatim. You know, twelve Shvatim in general generally speaking, there's Yisachar as Wulun. There are those that are Yisachar that are meant Yismach Bahya Lacha, the Swasta the the Indian is learning Taira and Zvulun. Ritzei secha. They're 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 making the parnasa and they, they have equal schar. They split it. Some it says chesidus. Wulun doesn't just mean business. It means they excel in doing mitzvahs. So then there's there's, there's Torah and there's mitzvahs. Staka bechlal is the main mitzvah. So they excel in that. So it's Yiddishkeit is very colorful. There's different directions in Yiddishkeit. Mentioned that they once ex- they have explained in a letter once how come the about this the the the, the idea behind the Magen David uh, why why it became or Kaviyacho why it's a Yiddish symbol not uh, not taking any political side but just the idea that was writing to an artist uh, one thing we could learn from Magen David Yiddish star a secular star is that it's always made with five corners. The Magen David is with six corners. The idea of six corners, what it is, it's an arrow up and an arrow down. It's point up and, point, and it's mixed together. The down is on top and the up is below. So that's how you make it. Two triangles. Two triangles. Yeah. And the idea of that, 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 that brings out the whole Yiddishkeit. The, the other religions, uh, I'm going to say in a second, the other religions, either their focus is on up, their their galach or the the either they fat their galach uh, you know the officially the, is not married and they have their things of no eating and fasting and going on mountains and uh, what do you call it meditation and yoga uh, different things of leaving up the whole religion is based on going up in general the non-religious or perhaps even other religions is all about going down making money life uh, pride. Uh, Social life being Mr. Famous, COVID, different things of down. Yiddishkeit, that Yiddishkeit is the up and the down and the down and the up. Is that, is, is, is about taking, they say the joke, everything Yiddishkeit is with food. <laughs> it's always food, every yomtif and everything is. So it's, it's always about, it's, it's, it's something about gashmis, it's about a kugel, a chalent, you know, something, uh, a gashmis, like a thing. And then all the mitzvahs all apply to how much stucco with the income we get and mezuzah and the, uh, and the house that we own and so on and so forth, the kashras, the food that we eat. And yet, and, and together with that, it's, the, it's all to the Ebishter. There's, there's also there's Lumod and, and Tefillah. Just bringing out that, that Teirah mitzvah itself is, it's all serving Hashem, but in serving Hashem there's Different directions in serving Hashem. So Chassidus gets into that in serving Hashem, there's also the Ani Ledaydi V'daydi Li serving Hashem. There's also Daydi Li V'ani Loi serving Hashem. And in generally speaking, that's the difference of Torah and Tefillah. I want to bring out why Ani Ledaydi is Indian of Tefillah. The main difference between Torah and Mitzvahs, we'll put that in one category, and Tefillah in another category, the idea of the the mitzvah of Torah and mitzvahs, both Torah and mitzvahs are both it's God given gifts. It's a gift from Hashem. Torah, what's Torah? Torah is this pasuk comes from the Eibushter. Torah Shabbal Peh is the Eibushter through the it's the Ruach Hakodesh through the through the tzaddikim the Gainim. It's the Eibushter that's that's in the Torah. The mitzvah is, take this pasuk and bring it into your kepala, bring it into your head. Daidi li, Hashem came to me, gave me this Torah. Vani loy, I'm just being a mensch, and I'm bending forth and listening to what the pasuk is saying. And the same thing is also, in, generally speaking, in mitzvahs. Hashem formed this thing called tefillin. Obviously, it took us to make the tefillin, but the idea of tefillin is, is Hashem's present to the world. Mezuzah and so on and so forth, all the mitzvahs, tzitzit. 
He gave it to us. I have to take it, put it in the tzitzis, and wear the tzitzis. So it's, it's things where Hashem came to the world, and, I, and when I'm doing the mitzvah, I'm, just, I'm accepting Hashem in this world. And the outcome will also be the arrow down, meaning I'm bringing Hashem into this world. I'm bringing Hashem. We know you do a mitzvah. Hashem is, Hashem is going into, when, 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 when you're wearing the tzitzis, you're refining the, 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 the wool, the, the, whatever the, the, what the tzitzis is made of. It comes from the sheep. So the sheep that it, it was cut from also gets elevated by the fact that a mitzvah is used from it. The sheep was, uh, had the grass and was helped by the farmer. All the things that had effect that this wool, the tzitzah, should be made the way it should be and that a yid made a bracha all get elevated when the yid makes a bracha and does a mitzvah on the tzitzah. So you're doing a mitzvah, you're bringing Hashem in many areas in this world. The Mashiach comes, we'll be able to see actually the effect that we have with our mitzvahs. How much... There's a story in, in this in this uh, from in this parsha. I read it in his uh, Evan Sefer, has his book. So in the pasuk Mikimi Melfordol, he's there's once a pasuk who who uh, who um, he did he wasn't didn't know how to learn too much, but he I think it was Tilim that he knew Tilim by heart. Wherever he would go, he was a water carrier. Wherever he would go, he would say Tilim. And uh, but he was, huh? <coughs> but, yeah, in those days, you know, that's all. In, in, in other words, he was, he was a water carrier, not sitting in yeshiva, I guess. That's yeah, so wherever he would go, he would say, tell him, that was his thing. After 120, he goes up there. Schusim, uh, he did very, very few schusim. He didn't learn too much. And then comes in the malach with a whole sack of, of mud, of soil. Puts it on the side of the schusim, right away tilts over, right away to Gan Eden. So what was the soil? This is the soil that he wa- that he was walking on. Wherever he said Taira, right, he was saying the Tilim. He's walking on the soil, so that soil became. He elevated that soil, and so that soil became part of the mitzvah. That all weighed down. So he says that's what it says in the pasuk, Mikimi Miyafra Dal. That the Dal he was a poor in mitzvahs. He was low in mitzvahs, but Mikimi, he was raised, may offer, because of the offer that he was trampling on and doing the mitzvah. No, this is a classical, uh, that's why the Rebbein made a big, uh, when the Friedrich Rebbe came here to America, one of his first uh, campaigns was at the yeshiva boy, Shalom Mishnai's Bapa. Bapa, when they go on the subway, when they, uh, a person in the store should always be chazing the words of Taira Bapa. It's, it's, it's changing, that's the first way to penetrate the, the Avir. To, to, to bring Taira and Kedusha into the place that we are. So, so this is uh, this an example. This concept of a mitzvah is f- you're taking from up there to down here. Tilim is holy. You say, you say Tilim on the soil, so you're bringing holiness into the soil. That's Tfila, on the other hand, Tfila, you're starting with what's a mitzvah of Tfila? The original mitzvah of Tefillah min is, 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 there's no text. The mitzvah min is that when you need something, you just speak to Hashem. Chachamim were kaveya, that it should be, uh, here there's mechayk is vishaynin, but mechlalos, this is the opinion that chachamim were kaveya, you're mechayv mukh, to be mispalal every day, bakosh asrachav, you should ask Hashem, for what you need. Even then, to begin with, it wasn't a nusach. Everyone dominated in their own shprach. And it says, Nishtab shu people didn't know how to speak Hebrew properly, the languages, the golos. So then uh, they were metakin a nusach for everyone to, to actually daven in the... But even even that, even the siddur. Who, happened, was, who was metakin the tefillah? Yeah, the, the main part of daven, the Anshik Knesset Yeah. There's different parts, different, which was added... Uh, even from later that we have, I think you see the Siddur parts from the from the Chaim Vital, different piyutim from later on. The Shmoneset is Anshik Knesset. So, 
I'm saying even parts which is which we say tilim suke de zimra, it's not. It was nitkan to put, make it part of davening. We're not learning tilim while we're davening. We're doing the mitzvah davening. Davening is. It says. Lo yasa adam tefilase keva ela tachanunim lifnei amakim. Davening is not. It doesn't say that about Torah. It doesn't say. It, it says in Pirkei Avos. Lo ya. I'm not quoting 100 percent. To the extent. Lo yasa adam tefilase keva ela tachanunim rachamim tachanunim lifnei amakim. A person shouldn't make his davening just a daily routine. Rather, it should be. Tachanunim v'rachamim. It should be from uh, merciful and something deep from his heart. Lufnate for the Eibishter. I was thinking of this very thought here. You said originally, Philo is not not a nusach. You're asking Hashem for your needs. You're going to say in your own language, and you ask for your needs. You, you generally, when you talk about your needs, you're pretty into it. You don't have to really worry about whether it's going to be by road or not. But now that you have a, a you know this sinner and you have it established, and people, I mean, just you know. I'm Davin Mincha, I'm Davin Chakras, I finish Chakras. Yeah, it's like very, it seems quite yeah. different. It's Kerva. That's, it's Kerva, yeah. Yeah, yeah th that, so that's, why, <laughs> that's why it's dangerous. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why there's the halachas before. Well, that's, we'll speak about it. If there's time, we'll get into some details of Davin. But uh, Davining is. Davening is based on on my on my on the way I'm I'm heartsick and open to speak to the Ebishter. Based on that will be how the Ebishter will answer me. Walter writes in Tanya the Davening is in Simon Chavdal in Negeres Hakodesh. He writes that the davening is—it's not just a one-way street. I want to explain why it's also daidi li. Ani li daidi ve daidi li. The reason davening is daidi li is not just because I hope Hashem will listen to my davening. It's also that during davening, what happened? He writes there. Now, the Rebbe writes in Negeres Hakodesh a warning to people that uh, speak during davening. And he says, from when the minion starts until after Kaddish Basra, no one should do any speaking. And if someone speaks, he's, he's, if he's b'mezid, he's in a nidui, he has to sit on the floor, ask from three people a heter. He says, Mashal ma to a king that has once a day, I'm sorry, he doesn't say once, he says once in a, once a, once in ever, like that he, he's always, the king is always hidden, he's always, and once he says that you could come and see me and you could come and speak to me uh, and, 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 if, and then he comes to the people that accessible to the people and then you're going to have one person turn to his friend and speak his nonsense things at that time. He says, it's a chutzpah, it's a even if b'malchus. Even if you're thinking like a fool, don't act like a fool. He says the same thing as davening. Davening is that time that the Ebishter from the deepest levels is revealing himself to those that are mispalo. As he says, that is, as known to all the the Yehidei Dover, that the Nusach HaTfilah, the Ache Knesset HaGdela set up, is fitting with the teachings of Kabbalah, with the way that Hashem reveals himself in Oisei HaTfilah. That's right here. Hashem reveals himself. He says, the, he says, Hashem reveals himself in the time of davening, every morning, this is the time, it's called the time of Meich and the Galus, Hashem is revealed in a higher way in the morning time. Gam lamato, the way that the Chachamim were Mesakim, the Nusach Atfila, is 
in a way of how Hashem puts himself into davening. And Hashem reveals himself in the words of davening to everyone, according to how much you put yourself into it, based if you put into it your best, so your best and the way you're, as much as your neshama can handle. So that means davening is also a time of a two-way street. It's not just a time to pour out a, a heart to Hashem and then Hashem will do with it what He wants, so hopefully answer. But it's a time when a person actually, we say, it's a time when he actually can meet Hashem and experience Hashem because Hashem is hiding in the words of davening. So that's why it's Anila Daidi, it begins with my preparation, the Daidi Li, Hashem, then I'm able to see Hashem in davening. So before we get into the details of davening and how it works and how to do it, there's a few general um, outlooks that we have to have to understand what we're doing in davening. Number one. Number one, I saw this quoted in in the name in the name of the Rebbe. I didn't look in the original, but I saw it. The way he brings it out, he says the Rebbe asks a question. He says, "Bechayer, the whole thing of davening, the way davening is uh, the, our perception from, from a secular without thinking about it too much. The common perception is." Uh, is that we're asking Hashem for our needs, is l'chayr, if you think about it, it's a big chutzpah. Why? Because we want Hashem. If you're fitting, then you need something. You need a pranasa barachav. You need a shidduch for your daughter. You need some. If you're worthy of it, because you're doing the deal with... The, you know that Hashem is... Uh, Tzadiku b'chol derachav, chasid b'chol ma'isav. Hashem knows what He's doing. If He's, if you're worthy of it, so then you're probably going to get it, and you get it without being a, a nunnik and asking for a, for a to be a to be a teacher's pet. You ask for something. If you don't deserve it, so what are you asking for? Maybe Hashem will change His mind. Uh, every gangster thinks that. Why? Why? Why should we think Hashem would change his mind? Based on what premises? Yeah, there's different answers. I'm just saying it was cute. That's I'm saying. I didn't see the original. I'm sure in the original, the Rebbe would bring out the question a lot more and the answer would be more precise. So it was just a short quote. And so he says, he says no. He says davening. What davening is, davening is, this is brought in Chassidus in the famous Kuntus of the Rebbe Rashab, Kuntus at Tfilo, he says, Tfilo is Meloshin, Meloshin Teifel. It's brought in Mishnah, is Taris, it speaks of Kalim, attachment. When you connect two things. Tfilo is, like, is when you connect to Hashem. So he says, before you daven, you're not worthy of it. Before you daven, you know you're not worthy. And da- by davening, you are connecting yourself to Hashem. By that connecting, you're transforming yourself. You're becoming a new person. You now become worthy of, of, of receiving. You perhaps, or you hope, that you become worthy of now receiving what, you, what you're asking for. That's why Chachamu were metakin, the whole section of davening, of the whole, the, the, the brachis, the kabane, the haidu, the zimra, the krishma, the whole thing, what does it have to do with Shmanesri? Shmanesri, first of all, it's two mitzvahs over here. Let's, we have to know our davening is a combination of two things. There's Shma, which is a mitzvah to do in the morning and night, and the Shmanesri, which the Bakasha Strachov. That's first of all, one, one connection. They made it so connected that they said you can't make any hefsik between Gaul Yisrael and, uh, and Shmanesri. Smich and Gulu Litvila. It's like so connected. And then they made behind that Psuke de Zimra and all these things. The reason is because, like we just explained, because it's not just something, it, davening is not just getting up there banging on the wall and whoever could bang the loudest and 
get a, a, upset as Hashem, at Hashem the most, that's who Hashem's going to listen to. Because he, he let himself out of his anger how much he really wants something. That's not Chas Hashem what the is. It's about connecting to Hashem. And how do we connect to Hashem when we think about the greatness of Hashem? And that's what the Psukhah de Zimra is doing. So, Psukhah de, so in essence, that's what Krishma is. Krishma is the midst of Liyachadoy. When Yid is accepting the oneness of Hashem, that's when he's understanding the greatness of Hashem. The thing is though, that the Achdus of Hashem is already step two. The Achdus of Hashem is the oneness of Hashem of Hashem Malakeinu Hashem Echad and how Hashem is constantly creating the world and how the world is really one with Hashem it's not getting into that now which really as human beings we even have a step before that of first and foremost just recognizing Hashem's greatness of the things that are evidently apparent just looking at the big things of what Hashem created even before we're Meivin Dover Mitoich Dover just recognizing just the su'u mare me'neichem or u'mi bara'eila is already an accomplishment for us. We are, are in sleep, we become such, it says, kibame yechtalad, kibame nechshavu. It says a person in, in the morning, you shouldn't greet someone else. You shouldn't say shalom aleichem to someone else in the morning because he's considered like a veda zara. Kibame nechshavu, ati kibame laboma. Obama is a mizbeach. That's not we're not not for Hashem. You said it's a frat of Huh? When you get up in the morning, you see someone before you daven. You said it's a frat of Yes. Yeah, so you, you change it, and also you're allowed to say it in shul. A, you can't be mashkim in the pischay. Yeah. That's just a, you can't because that's too much a, of like giving respect of someone else, and that because a person when he wakes up is is bama. He's very self-centered. He had a couple of hours of just. Of forgetting about the Eibishter. And naturally a person, without our senses working, we're self-centered. And now Dr. Ebb explains in Tanya, the, the, the first soul which comes before the godly soul is the selfish soul, so on and so forth. So a person naturally is not necessarily thinking about Hashem. So first and foremost, so it begins with brachis, which let's recognize the good things that are around us, the good things that Hashem gives us. And then there's the whole setup of Psuki de Zimra, which is recognizing Hashem's Galus in the things that he created in my Sebereshis which that's Bechlolos and all the Halalukas, the Psuke de Zimras and then the part that we stand up of Ivarach David is already we're getting into Lucha Hashem Hagdula, Vagvur, Vatiferes and then Oz Yashir, Kriyas Yamsev, the miracles it's the more it's, it's the more spiritual things that we don't see a whole time it, take, it takes more intelligence and wisdom and eyesight to see them, but it's still things of how Hashem presents Himself to this world. So it's all in the first part of Sukkot Zimra. That's the first thing of us recognizing the greatness of Hashem. And then we then we move on to the Malachim, the, the Kaddish Kaddish, which is deeper concepts and as Chassidus explains at length. And which that enables us to have Achtos Hashem and finally say Hashem Echad the way we're supposed to be saying Hashem Echad which this all is making us connect intellectually to Hashem and, not just, and, and connecting intellectually means actually being there being there with the intellect power with Chachma Bina and Das you're, so, you, so we connect it when you're at that level connecting to it and then recognizing that in this whole oneness of Hashem I am here so I'm here for a purpose what, what purpose am I here for? to do Torah mitzvahs what will help me to do Torah mitzvahs? would help me if I would have more das would help me if I would do teshuva would help me if I would have refuah and baruch aleinu and parnasa barachav and all those things and the main thing is geula that would help us so much more to have to be able to serve Hashem properly, and that's why I'm asking for these things. So in other words, the davening is an outcome of being connected to Hashem. When one is connected, he's already, already a vessel of receiving Hashem's brachas. So here you're saying the davening, well, here, right now you're saying the spirit of the davening is to, is to ask that you be a better evident Hashem, a better Hashem, right? Request that you're going to... Hashem, or successfully, so therefore you 
Okay. That's up to Shmoneh, sir. Sorry, thank you. Up to Shmoneh, what we're doing up to the, we're praising Hashem, but what, what we're doing by praising Hashem is also making ourselves more fit to stand in front of Hashem. Now, what we're asking for is, in Mikra Yitzim Dibshut, we're asking literally for the things that we're asking for. If, if, if Rafa'inu means a, a, like a healthy body that we should be able to serve Hashem. That we should be able to serve Hashem, that's, I mean, that's, that's where I heard you sort of... Yeah, everything is that we should be able to serve Hashem. Yeah, and that's the spirit of the Shmanesra. Right. Which is different, I mean, when, per, when you first say that initially Tefillah is there established to request your needs, ask for your needs, it's probably not the first thing that enters a person's mind. And being physical people, you know, that what we need is to be able to serve Hashem. It's not the first thought that probably enters your mind when you think about your needs. But that, that's interesting to say. That. Yeah, that's why this is one of the twists that Chassidus gives, yeah. as I'll get into in a minute. That's also why he mentioned this. So this is why we say before Shema Nesrei, the Pasuk, which the question is, you're not allowed to make a half sick between uh, Gaul Yisrael and so it says Fila Richtonami. It's like you're starting, it's the beginning already of Shmanasri. This Adnais Vasitiv Tachfi Yagitil Sacha, you know what the, the Pasik means? Uh, you should open my lips and my mouth will repeat your praises. The praises that you praise, I'm, I'm repeating. Look at the different meanings, but the praise that you want me to praise. But it's your praises, not just praises about you, but the praises that you have asked me to praise. It's it's making a a declar dec, like a declaration. Uh, I say, uh, like a not, not a macha, maida. I'm, I'm like, duh, before I get into Shmanesi, which looks like I'm getting all selfish over here, I'm making here a, a, a my duh, that this all I'm doing for you. I'm opening my, my mouth, you're opening my mouth. You asked me to daven. On my own, I wouldn't open my mouth to you. Disclaimer. A, a disclaimer, yeah. Something like that. That it's not, you don't, get, don't get me wrong, I'm not asking for my own self. I need my, that das, I need that parnas, I need, whatever you do with me is fine. You asked me, you gave me the ability, you asked me to serve you, and you gave me this ability to ask for you that this, that my life could be better, and then you'll help me do better, and then I'll be able to serve you better. And that's the reason I'm asking. Don't, there's no selfishness, ego. If you would ask me, I would stay away. I know you're the king himself, and I'd rather, uh, it's made something, it shouldn't be, life shouldn't be so good, but it, Rather than be that chutzpanik and, and speak to the king. So this concept is also based on a whole different. Uh, the, see, there's a lot of teaching. Is based on there's a, there's the Magid's Vart. It says, "Ein emdin li spalal elamitech kevid reish." This says in Shulchan Aruch. I mean, it's from the Gemara. That davening is with. Okay, but Rish, serious. Oh, he named an element of Simcha. So it has to be Simcha. You have to start with a, with a happy mood. You have to be in a good mood. But before the good mood, the okay, it's serious. You know, you're speaking to Hashem. You have. That's why a person should, you, you you can't right away start davening when you come into shul. You have to you have to walk in more than four amis from the door you have to wait a certain amount and then start davening you have to gain gain focus so um, the Magi teaches on this in Indum Nispal El Mitech Kebid Rosh Kebid Rosh Dilamailo there's the Gemara and Brochus Davdal that says that the Ebishter is saying, Klani Mereshi, Klani Mizrai, that by after the time of the Churban Beis Amigdash, Hashem is saying, My head hurts, my hand hurts, my. Hashem is in So it says there, the Lush, Hashem's head is in pain. It's the Reish of the Shechina. It says, Magid says, when we daven, you can't daven for yourself. You have to daven for the Kaibid Reish, for the, for the pain, for the severity, the heaviness. Which is being felt now in the Reish of the Shechina. So the question is, we may a big tzaddikim are so sensitive to feel 
the pain of the Rebbeinu Shalei but but each one of us, the, our, the midst of davening is to daven what you care for, what you feel. We have to be honest with ourselves. Because the strachov, unless you're that tzaddik, that says about in Tanya, the tzaddik v'toivloi, that you're the, that, uh, the, you're the tzaddik gomer that says b'nei aliyah, that even what they do is just for the ebish there, if you, but if you're anything lower than that, that has something, you're also looking for your own nefesh at Hashem, that you're looking for something for your own gain. Whether it's physical needs, even spiritual needs, you're asking that you should be connected, you should have a dveikus, you should have. How could we say that a person should only daven for the Ibishta? So, so the Rebbe has a beautiful explanation on this. You might have heard this. Uh, it's a pretty famous one that has been quoted many times. Um, the Rebbe spoke on the Taftir of Reish Hashanah. That's the story of Chana. The Gemara and Brachas learned a lot of the halachas. Of Shmenesi, we learn that from Chana. Chana is the one that's davening Kaila Lo Yishama. And Raksvatanaot. So there, very interesting how Eli sees she's, da- she's davening for a child. Eli sees her davening. And, and uh, th- thinks that she's a shikr. She's drunk because davening wasn't a common thing at that time, seemingly. When she finishes, she says, What are you doing here? Said, Go away. So she says, I'm not the. Uh, I'm not a shikr. Eshbech is nafshi lifnei Hashem. It's the reason it's coming out this way. It's because I'm uncontrollably crying because it's my soul coming out. So he said, if that's the case, what are you asking? A son? I promise you next year you'll have a son. That's when Shmuel Hanavi was born. So, a lot of questions in the story, a lot of things. But... um, We'll say two. Qu- the main question: If Ailey thought that she was really shikker, she was really drunk, why was he waiting for her to finish davening? <laughs> a drunkard in the base of Migdash. I mean, I'm sorry, in the Mishkan. She like get the kainim and uh, send her out. And if she, it says they're clear that he waited for her to finish. So that means, yeah. So she knew she was dumb. So then what was his question to her? Then also that there was also, there was also, there was also davening before that. You see, the Amst of Yidin were crying. There was, obviously there was, there was a, a Avram daven. There was davening. What was the, what was the big pella of, of Eli that, to think that she was shikra because of davening? And then another question, a side question, this all will explain us why, this is the Aftar Reish Hashanah. We read this Reish Hashanah because it says, uh, she became pregnant with Shmuel on Reish Hashanah. Many, many of Teres has a connection with Reish Hashanah, and, or maybe even Reish Hashanah directly about Hashem being a king. Or Hashem. This is a story that happened on Reish Hashanah. It's a very irregular uh, connection. And throughout Nevi'im and Suvim, we can find things which are more, uh, Nevi'im, I mean, we can find things which are more connected to Reish Hashanah. There has to be that the whole story has something here, a message for Reish Hashanah. The point is that that Eli th- there was the concept of davening. There was davening because when a person needs something, he asks for something. But here it was it was an outpour of her neshama, like we said, uncontrollable crying and things. So on one hand, he knew she was davening. He knew she wasn't drunk. And that's why he, he didn't take her and throw her out. But he did davening, you know. On the other hand, he rebuked her, rebuked her after. He says, you're standing by the Kedah Shekadosh and you're standing here in the holiest place. It's not the place to be so selfish. To be, you know, you should be more sensitive. Ask in short, say what you need and go away. You know, you're standing right in front of Hashem. It's not a time to let out your heart. In other words, that the people daven is because we need, you know. So you, so you ask. Chassidim would go in uh, to the Rebbe when finally they would need Gashmias. 
they would be embarrassed to ask for something personal. But if they need it, in the end, they would say, Rebbe, I'm embarrassed to ask, but I need this bracha. I need, you, you try to throw it in and, and buy a ticket for it. You know, try to smear it. But here, she, she's standing there, she's crying. So he says, you know, this is not proper. That's a shikr. What is a shikr? A shikr is someone who's, uh, what happens when a person is shikr? He loses his, he, oh, his emotions come out. His emotions take over his mind. And emotions is selfishness. That's where he's only feeling himself. He's not aware of his surroundings. That's a, that's what we could determine a shikr. He's not aware of actions of people around him. Only aware of himself. He says this is not the place of being shikr. You're now in front of Hashem. You should be aware of who in front of you're standing. Chana gave Eli to understand. He said, "I'm, I'm not asking for myself." Here the Rebbe brings out a title of the Baal Shem Tev. It says, um, The reason a person is thirsty and hungry is not just because his taste buds and his stomach is growling, but because because his soul desires to refine the elements which are in this food and this drink. And that's why he's hungry. He thinks he's hungry just for because he just feels his body. But what's really happening is his neshama is really the one that has the desire of of uh, infusing and having a hashpa on these things. Natural empty satav. This is what Chana was saying. She said, "I'm a Jewish mother, and and I mean, I'm a Jewish woman. And as a Jewish woman, I have that desire, which was God given to a Jewish woman, to want to have children." And the reason Hashem gave it to me is not, is not, it's not a selfish thing. It's because this is how a woman, this is how a woman serves Hashem. And this big desire that I have for a child is that's my way I could serve the Eibushter. I know the Eibushter's beauty will come out by me having a child. And to express, to express that, this child is a child I would give away to Hashem. That's the way I would educate him, and I and I will, and I devote his life to Hashem. That's why she made then and there the promise that he's give, I'm giving him away. So that means that even though, even at that, even though it was a, a shikr, a very emotional davening, which was coming from her heart, it was yet permeated with the complete bittle to the Ebishtar and wanting to do what the Ebishtar wants. It was, and with the awareness that 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 I am made with this need is not a selfish thing. It's the way Hashem positioned me and made me. And in my position, this is, this, this is what the Abishar wants me to daven for. And I'm, I'm asking not out of selfishness, but out of, out of, uh, out of self-nullification. Hashem gave me as a woman, the will and the, the power of raising a child, it would be wasteful and shameful for Hashem not to give me that child. Because of what I could have him and give him and how he could help out the Yiddish folk. And we know later on when she brought Shmuel to Eli, she said, She know that filah that she was crying, it was accepted. Yeah. Yeah, it was obvious that that was that. So the, the Rebbe goes on. This is what we're saying, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is a very big question. Hashanah, or making it like we said in the beginning that it's the time we're crowning Hashem as king. Hashanah davening is very <laughs> so, so. Part of it, we're saying Hashem, you're the only one. Hashem, 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 and the Atuhu Hashem levadecha, and Adai Noilam, and all the things we're saying. Leinu Shabeach, and we're bowing down. It is, it's accepting of Hashem's oneness. We're blowing the shofar. It's not time to focus on that we should have Ma'avir Nisreya Agzera. That we should have a good year. You'll think about yourself later. Now we're focusing on Hashem should want to be king and we're, we're accepting Him as king for the new year. So be loyal. Put yourselves on the side for at least one day, two days, ten days. And, 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 and be interested in me, whatever will be with you this year. Don't mention now your own needs. Yet the whole davening is back and forth. The Rosh Hashanah davening is back is. It's accepting Hashem as king and saying you're the only one and we accept you and no matter what and how you treat us, you know, it's not, when we say Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimlech is, uh, 
if I'm here or not, you're here. So it's, it's above how you treat us. It's a, an acceptance of Hashem's oneness. And yeah, it's full of asking that we should have a Shana Toiva Masukah. How do both things go together? So that's what the Haftarah is coming to answer, the story of Chana. That's the Yisoyed of Yiddish Davening. He's saying Davening is not a selfish thing. We're asking, it's, it comes together. It's for instance, uh, Rebbe gives this example, is, is when the king, when, it, when, when a king, become, it, 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 when we crown, we want the king to become a king, so we crown him, we accept him to be the king. So we not just ask, we don't just stand there quietly and with that one request, be the king, be the king, and now you go figure it out yourself. To help the king, and to start him off, and to, or, or to express how deep is our commitment to accept him as our king, we say, please be the king, to the extent, you know, king, I think I could be your advisor, Make me, help me be your advisor, hear me, I need, a, I need a bigger office space, that way I could plan out, map out your wars a little better, I'm good at this, give me a little more panasa, more achava, I'll have more time to do your thing. We involve ourselves in crowning the king because it's not just a, a 10 day or a 1 day service, a hit and run that he should accept it and then we could go by to it with our lives. We're, we're showing that our whole life is devoted to him and that's why it's intertwined with our needs. So this is uh, resolves what the, the Maggid says that ain't named in the that davening has to be for the for Hashem's pain. So how does that fit with our regular davening? Like you said, we usually we think about ourselves. We want this, we want this. It's okay to think about what, what you want. That's davening. We're not saying by davening you have to be like I'm only thinking about Hashem. We're just saying the minute before davening, when you say the Adnai Swase Tiftach, stop a minute and think what you're saying. You're saying that the Eibishter is here. And what we're asking for is for the Eibishter. And because the Eibishter gave me these things and these needs and these details in life, that's why I'm asking for all these details. Just to finish with the, there's I, someone's the Rebbe says, yeah, like a joke, like what it says, Eidim Salam Tech Chibid Reish, we learn, we learn Chassidus before Dominic. He says, you should learn so much chassidus that your head should be tired from, you should have a headache from the chassidus before davening, then you know you're ready to start davening. <laughs> Hashem is enough in your head when, you're, when you have that, <laughs> when your head is falling. Fine, the Ebishah should help. We should be at Slachot de Ke'elul, at Slachot de Tfilah, Shev de Gula, take me on the